All right, good morning, everyone. This is the Fairfield Economic Development Commission meeting of uh, Thursday, April 7th. Uh, good morning to all. Uh, we're meeting via Zoom at 8.30 a.m. Uh, we have with us uh, Chairman Kevin Lesko. We also have uh, Commissioners uh, Rappaport, uh, Hockhauser, Beck, and Colburn. Uh, we also have Commissioner Emeritus uh, Don Peterson and Beverly Ballas from the Fairfield Chamber of Commerce joining, as well as our recording secretary, Gretchen Gerstner. So with that, I'll turn things over to you, Kevin, for uh, the call to order and your welcoming remarks, and then we'll get into our meeting. All right. So, uh, well, uh, and again, good morning, Mark and Gretchen, uh, Colin, Justin, Matt, uh, Ken, Don, and Beverly. Uh, I'm glad everyone is here. Uh, we, uh, we have a I think we have a, a, a maybe an interesting uh, uh, conversations today. I, I, there were a few things that I actually wanted to bring across to, with Mark and get uh, opinions on. Uh, and thankfully, we're we're getting into spring. Maybe uh, maybe uh, Mark and I can talk about meeting in person again. Uh, uh, that would be excellent. That would be great. So, with that said, uh, I'll uh, ask maybe for a a. a, a a reading or not a reading of the minutes, but an acceptance. Of <laughs> Thank you for sparing us that. <laughs> acceptance of, of, uh, of last month's minutes. Uh, do I have a, uh, a, a, a second on that? Yes. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very, very good. All right. So uh, I'm going to pass it back to Mark. Mark, please. Okay, for uh, my report this morning, I have a couple of things to, uh, to make you all aware. Uh, last night, we had the, um, I had an opportunity to present to the RTM um, with respect, they had their first uh, budget hearing uh, workshop that last evening. <clears throat> for those of you who have been following along, uh, the Board of Finance didn't make any changes to our requested budget. Uh, for the department of $317,000. It's an 8% reduction year over year uh, from, from what we have currently, but most of that uh, reflects the fact that we had a one-time allocation uh, in the current year's uh, budget for uh, to update the town's website, uh, which I'm happy to report is underway. Uh, so we've uh, conducted uh, two interviews to date and a third one uh, this morning uh, we did get a decent uh, response to our request for proposals. I'm part of the uh, evaluation committee along with um, our IT director, our webmaster, Mary Mao, and Jackie Bertalone from the first, uh, first Slack Women's Office. Uh, so uh, again, we're, we've narrowed it down from the, the group that uh, submitted proposals to three, and hopefully we'll be making a decision uh, within the next couple of weeks uh, and moving forward with that initiative. But um, with respect to the budget, again, everything went pretty smoothly. There were no questions uh, this past evening, uh, last night uh, with respect to our budget. And we expect a vote um, probably, you know, usually in May uh, when they, they adopt the budget and set the mill rate. So at least all the, all the fireworks and, uh, you know, Co uh, conversation around the budget pertains to other departments were, uh, were a fairly small um, uh, budget request uh, compared to everything overall. So um, again, nothing, nothing major report other than the process is moving forward. The other thing I wanted to mention is the outdoor dining. I think uh, some of you probably saw that the <clears throat> General Assembly passed and the governor signed into law uh, an act that extended the existing temporary accommodations uh, through April of next year. Uh, we've since notified all, all of the restaurants here in town that if they have an existing permitted outdoor dining space, uh, they don't need to do anything um, that, uh, that will continue. If they wanna create something new or expand an existing footprint, they'll need to get a permit, but the fees will again be waived. Um, you know, we're setting aside the typical requirements that are in our zoning regs as it relates to parking and other, um, other requirements. So uh, that process that started in 2020 will continue uh, through next year. In the meantime, on your behalf, I did present uh, a proposed regulation amendment to our Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, the hearing was concluded, um, you know, immediately thereafter, the General Assembly acted to, to enact this uh, temporary measure or extend that through April of next year. So I suspect that uh, the commission may take that 
as a sign that there's no immediate urgency to act on this. Uh, but nevertheless, we did propose uh, the, the text change and uh, the hearing went, I think, pretty well. I did have um, about a half a dozen letters of support from restaurants indicating how helpful it would be if uh, the commission were to make these changes to make some of these uh, things per more permanent. We did have one uh, person at the hearing that offered some, uh, some cautionary remarks, but I was able to respond to some of those questions, I think, uh, satisfactorily. And you know, now uh, the matter is in the hands of the commission and hopefully they'll act on it in the next uh, a month or so um, to, uh, to decide, you know, where we're, where we're heading, you know, going forward after the temporary measures uh, um, uh, expire next April. Um, a couple other things, I, I, I don't know if anyone has any questions on that, but um, on either, either the budget or the outdoor dining before I... Just, just out of curiosity and briefly, what, what was the cautionary hmm. concern that was raised? Well, I think the uh, it was uh, Attorney Joel Green, I think, who was on the um, on the on the call uh, for another matter. But in the in the meantime, he took an opportunity to uh, express concerns about the proposed uh, reg amendment. Um, I think he, his his um, if I can paraphrase, it was more that hey, we don't we don't really know what the impact of this is, take it slow, be, be very cautious. And my point was in response, we've had basically two years in which to evaluate the effectiveness of, of these changes, all of which have produced no adverse impacts in terms of off street traffic or parking uh, to adjoining property owners or the like. And so I think that's ample evidence that we can safely make these changes uh, should the commission so choose. So. Uh, you know, it was just one of those things where somebody wanted to put a monkey wrench in it <laughs> a little bit. And, and then to make it, make it more interesting, I had a meeting with him the following day on, a non, on an unrelated topic to, uh, uh, during which he apologized for, for screwing up my presentation. So <laughs> that's anyway. funny. So we'll see where they go. I, I, I suspect that, you know, that I got some questions back from the commission. Um, you know, if they had to make changes, what, what's the highest priority? Um, you know, it's all, it's in their discretion. So we'll see, but I, I suspect more than anything, the fact that the general assembly and the governor acted to extend the temporary measures for another year, uh, probably, um, uh, you know, certainly doesn't give a, a great sense of urgency to these changes, but I'm trying to keep the pressure on that they need to act now to, to at least provide some long-term stability so that restaurants uh, can plan accordingly. And, and Mark doesn't have to go and readdress the whole thing again. Next <laughs> yeah, <time. laughs> exactly. I mean, right? Uh, right. And just curiosity, did they mention anything, any, any feedback on the square footage that uh, we kind of ballparked? Oh, they just took it uh, they they didn't specifically I, I suspect that there might be some work behind the scenes to trim that up a little bit but I think we gave ourselves a little bit of room to to hopefully come up with a happy meeting in between it did did you explain why we picked the number we picked so that I did we cut it I did um, I gave a rationale for it and um, you know, again, it depends how much weight they want to assign to that. Um, right. I think any, any movement in that direction would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else, Mark? So uh, a couple of things that we're working on. Uh, we have the Shop and Stroll into Spring event on April 28th. Uh, we're working with the Fairfield Chamber, as we usually do. Mary Alice uh, in my office has been taking the lead. Uh, this year, we're doing a, a pre-event, a ticketed pre-event with the Fairfield Foundation for Education at J.B. Percival from five to six and beyond. Um, the first 100 uh, attendees or folks that sign up um, will get a commemorative uh, wine glass and wine holder, as well as a, a free a complimentary glass of wine. Um, as well as a Fairfield buy local shopping bag with some special offers inside. Um, we're asking for a, a donation of $20 uh, to, to, for that, and all proceeds would then go to support the 
work of the Fairfield Foundation for Education, uh, which as you know, may, um, may know, provides many grants to educators to do uh, some really cool uh, things outside of the normal curriculum, uh, pro provide enrichment activities that aren't part of the normal budget process. Uh, so again, that's something we're happy to do and, and hopefully we'll get a good response to that. Um, and then the other thing I will mention too, uh, well, I just put in a grant application request, very small one uh, for $750 through the Office of Tourism to support our promotional efforts with Make Music Day, which is June 21st. Again, Mary Alice is working with uh, the volunteers that put on that event. This will be, I think, the fifth or sixth year that we've participated as a community. Um, in that international uh, celebration of, of musical arts. Uh, we had a great turnout this past year and hoping, uh, you know, as, as COVID recedes, uh, we'll have even more uh, venues and, and musicians and uh, attendees uh, taking part this year. And then um, I did mention the website. We're also working uh, with an e-scooter company Bird Scooter uh, to pilot initiative this year. I don't know if many of you who have traveled have seen these e-scooters in other communities. It really provides another transit option. First and last mile, uh, it's a green alternative. Uh, we did pitch it to the Fairfield Bike and Ped Committee as well as to the police department who had, um, the Fairfield Bike and Ped Committee had enthusiastic support. The police the department was also supportive of the initiative um, Bird would, would then provide uh, 50 to 75 scooters um, for the initial deployment. Uh, we do a 12 month pilot to see um, you know, what, uh, what the ridership demand would be and any other issues that we might have. They'll provide a 20 cent uh, per ride uh, revenue, co-revenue co stream uh, to, to the town as well as indemnify the town. Uh, but there's really you know, no cost other than that. Uh, there's no, no cost to the town at all. Uh, we're basically just giving an op, uh, the license to operate uh, within the community within certain parameters. And we'll just have to monitor, you know, the usage as well as other issues that may arise. What, what does separate Bird from other providers is they have a local uh, logistics manager um, that is within the community, uh, knows the community well, and is responsible for repositioning, uh, recharging the scooters every every day, and then repositioning them in areas uh, where they can, you know, be ridden. So, um, you know, he's he's the point of contact. He or she is the point of contact for the town in case there are any issues with uh, scooters not being where they should be. Uh, but again, just thought it would be a great opportunity to try something out. Twelve month pilot. We're going to present this. Uh, to the Board of Selectmen on the 18th, and assuming uh, they give the green light, uh, then we would look to roll this out uh, later this spring. Uh, through, through the summer and fall, uh, we think, you know, again, you know, most of the ridership interest would be in the downtown core between the train station, the beach, and the university. So um, that's what we're looking to do. Um, and then the last thing I'll mention is, um, We've been, I've been trying to push across the finish line uh, these um, various projects that we were involved in um, in terms of securing some grant assistance. Uh, the Stratfield Four Corners for, uh, is most is top of mind for me. Uh, we've been working on this for several years now. We're at the 95% design effort. We just uh, we had to work out an issue with one of the business owners, actually two of the business owners. Um, I think we've now resolved their issues and concerns and now are meeting with the state uh, virtually uh, to resolve their last remaining comments so we can hopefully button up the design, get this out to bid, uh, hopefully uh, by the end of the month, uh, so we'll be able to start construction later this fall. So I know I covered a bunch in my report, but I'm happy to take any questions at this time. Anyone? <laughs> Sorry, that was like a mouthful. <laughs> Anyone? Any other projects that I didn't touch on? Justin? Well, well, I have a question on the scooter program. I'm not familiar with it. I haven't seen it in other locations, but um, 
how does that work when it comes to uh, weather and um, potential thievery and all kinds of stuff like that? I mean, I mean, uh, the risks. I mean, obviously, there's no risk for the town because we're indemnified. But as a program, how, are there, how do they manage that? Well, every scooter has a GPS tracking device. Um, and so that's how they know where the scooters are and, and they can collect a whole bunch of data in terms of um, uh, the ridership metrics. They can also, um, within, a, within an area that we designate, uh, retard the speed so it can't exceed a certain, um, you know, they can't go over 20 miles an hour to begin with. Uh, but even within that, they have the ability remotely uh, to retard the speed even further if we wanted to, like in the downtown core, if we said, you know, we don't want sc scooters going more than 15 miles an hour, we could do that. And they also have, uh, they can create a boundary uh, whereby the scooters don't work if it goes outside the geographical boundary that we set. Uh, so they have a lot of uh, built-in safety features as well as features that allow them to, to manage the, the fleet. Um, but again, as you mentioned, it's not really, you know, any of those risks are really on the company. Um, and that's kind of why we thought, you know, let's, let's try it out. We don't really know what the demand will be. Uh, the interest will be within the public. I think it'll go well, but we don't know uh, for sure until we, until we try something. So it, it, the good, good thing is that most of the boards and commissions and other groups I've met with to date have indicated, yeah, let's, let's give it a, give it a shot. Uh, but, you know, where I've seen a lot of issues, uh, you know, on the West Coast, for example, you have, um, you know, huge fleets of scooters and they're all over the place. And uh, sometimes that creates issues in terms of impeding uh, other activities like people walking on the sidewalks and such. Um, but you also have, you know, on the plus side, you know, favorable weather all the time. So I, I don't think, well, it could run the whole year. You know, realistically, in New England, uh, we're really talking about the warmer, you know, from late spring through early fall, and then they'll go away <laughs> over the winter time because no one's going to be riding a, a scooter in January, we don't think so. Okay. Yeah. It's good to see. And they'll, they'll not allow like any, uh, any uh, transportation from Sea Grape, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they'll have to they'll have to work with uh, you know businesses or others in terms of uh, securing a space. Um, what they do is they try to create areas. These are dockless scooters. They don't require any docking stations per se, um, and they're and they have a kick. You know, they're meant to stand up. But you know, again, we the biggest issues we've heard from other communities is you know. Sometimes it's, it's, it's more the user error, you know, people not doing what they should be doing. And while the company can provide all the education and support that we want, uh, at the end of the day, you know, somebody could misuse it. And so we just need to have some uh, process in place to address that. And they can kick off people on the platform because obviously you have to use a credit card uh, to, to get in to, to, uh, to start the scooter. So they, they know who's, who's using it. Um, and it's, and if we, again, if we have major issues with it, we can, we can shut them down. So the, the pilot program does give us the right, I think either, either party to kind of, if it does, it's not working out for either of us, we, we don't need to stick with it, but we want to give it at least a good, good try to see how it goes. And if it goes well, we can extend it permanently. All right, good. All right. Are they available 24 hours or is there a time? Yeah, period? there is a time period. It's five, yeah. five to 12 midnight. Um, I know, yeah. I know, and um, I've seen these in a lot of cities like Austin, Austin, Texas is actually an example you don't want to look up because <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of bad things that happen there with it. But like Atlanta, for instance, is one where it's actually been pretty good. Um, and it, they usually have a cut. I think the cutoffs usually like eight or 10 o'clock down there or something like that. So that there's not a risk of younger people that are tending to, to go out at night, late at night, using them after they've been out drinking for hours on end. Right, right, right. The way the, the, way the police department looks at it is, is similar to, I mean, we already have people that are using scooters right now. They're just private, they're not part of a company fleet. And then they're similar to you know, people with bicycles, people with bikes or uh, motorized bikes or scooters, uh, private, privately owned. Can do the same crappy things. I, I mean, uh, obviously they they own it, so they have a little bit more 
maybe take a little bit more care and responsibility for it. But uh, they're they're going to regulate it just like any other, um, you know, that type of activity. So. And what, when will this actually be installed? Well, assuming the board uh, selectmen act on, on the 18th and respond favorably, then we would look to do it probably sometime in May uh, through you know this fall. Awesome. Okay. Um, and, and then uh, committee updates, Mark. Do we have any? Well, the I put I put this in uh, because you know we we had uh, as coming out of the retreat, we had some folks that were interested in working on some specific initiatives. And, you know, I've, I've uh, followed up with Colin. Colin's been really helpful in, in terms of using some of his, um, his programs and, and expertise to identify some potential um, companies in the tri-state area that might, uh, might be good um, leads for us to pursue. Uh, and so, um, you know, that was one area that we you know, I know Ken Hochhauser, again, given his, his um, area of expertise, was also looking to help uh, develop or uh, burnish our uh, marketing uh, program. But, um, and Rob's not here, but I know he's, he's been very interested in pursuing, you know, looking at uh, or exploring the opportunity to create waterfront uh, dining within a town uh, facility on the, um, on the beach area. Um, so I, I just th I thought it would be helpful if we kind of put some, um, you know, have a have a space on our agenda every month that we could report out some of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really need to talk to Rob directly. And Justin, I don't want to, you know, Justin is also was interested in doing a signature event like Taste of Fairfield, both the Taste of Fairfield and the waterfront dining uh, thing both would require some uh, involvement of other departments or commissions or boards. And I think we're at the point where what the EDC could do is examine the feasibility um, of this, determine what the cost and benefits might be, um, and kind of provide that information to help further the conversation, particularly with respect to the waterfront dining. Uh, where we need to really do a, a feasibility analysis, look at the market for that. Um, and I, I think this is a great opportunity to engage the uh, one or both the local universities and some student teams like we did with the community theater and have them do a market analysis and, and feasibility study for one or both. And that would help, I think, further the conversation with Parks and Rec in particular um, give them some information on which to act. But I think that's where I'm hoping to head um, next. And I, I will need to circle back with, with, with Rob uh, in particular. Um, you know, Justin and I have had a couple conversations, mostly through this, this forum. But, uh, but again, I thought, you know, if we had an opportunity to regularly report out some of these things that would keep us on the on the path uh, mm -hmm. to get some of these things accomplished. Good call. Yep. Good call. All right. Is there is there anything I'm missing uh, other than that? Did anyone else? The other thing that's that's major out there is the POCD update, uh, the plan of conservation development, and the um, planning and zoning uh, staff, uh, well, team have selected FHI. Uh, and we worked with FHI in the past to do some of these, uh, like the post road circle safety study. They, uh, their traffic uh, analysis and planning team did all that work, the feasibility analysis. So FHI is gonna be the consultant for the POCD update. But again, there's an economic development component for that and we should be very much engaged in that effort, so. Okay, so you'll keep us aware of that? Yeah. Um, did I miss any anything else that other folks had a passion to work on, or does that sound does that sound like a good approach, like to identify the lead from each of the economic development commission members that that can report out periodically? Does that does that sound like a good plan? I think it's perfect. I think it's perfect. That's great. So you're going to reach out to each of those uh, key individuals, yep. and uh, and then just get their agreement that they'll uh, they'll they'll kind of take a lead on that, and then. And then they'll kind of keep moving things forward a little bit and report back to us. That's, Great. That was my thought. Yes. Perfect. Uh, how about updates on developments? 
and pending applications? So uh, the one, you know, obviously we're all focused on the crossings at Fairfield Metro Center and the pending sale to the new uh, development team out of New Jersey, Accurate Builder and Developers. Um, they did uh, provide uh, some a plan set to inland wetlands. Um, what they're really doing is seeking a modification of one of the permit conditions uh, to allow them to move forward with uh, construction of building number four which is a residential building. Uh, they're making some changes to the phasing plan that was previously approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Instead of doing the residential building number three, which is at the point, the furthest uh, tip on um, Ash Creek, uh, they were proposing to flip that and do the one closest to the road, building number four, uh, which makes sense to me. Working out from the road towards the point um, does make a little bit more sense. Um, but before they can actually file for, a, so th these are preliminary steps that they need to take. They obviously have to close on the property, which they haven't yet done. Uh, they're still awaiting the state's consent to the assignment, uh, which we're working on. Uh, we don't anticipate any, uh, any significant issues. We've had a lot of conversations with the folks at DOT and DECD about this, and they've done their own due diligence and they're satisfied that, um, uh, this developer can perform, um, but we do need to close on, uh, get the state's consent so we can close and then uh, Accurate can then pull a building permit, which they intend to do uh, by June of this year. And so that's the thing that we're, um, you know, obviously most focused on in terms of development uh, sites. Uh, we did have a meeting with um, the prospective purchaser of 355 Kings Highway, which is the old Biller Volkswagen site. I had uh, coordinated a meeting through the state ombudsman uh, with uh, folks from Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection to talk about the site. Uh, the site is in a floodway uh, next to the Rooster River, or at least a portion of it is. And it is um, contaminated uh, with, um, among other things, some PCBs. Uh, and so the remedial plan calls for a targeted excavation and removal of PCBs above the actionable threshold, and then and constructing an engineered control system or cap over the entirety of the site, which would necessitate uh, bringing in importing some clean fill to create the cap. Um, and that's typically a no-no in a, in a flood zone. Uh, where we don't allow for importation of fill, but that's necessary to remediate the site. So the idea behind having the meeting was to navigate these uh, two competing public policy goals and figure out where the state was. And I think the remediation obviously will have to take precedent. Um, you know, that's the, that's the foremost concern. Without that, we can't clean up the site. So, um, you know, it wasn't, uh, it was as you would expect when you have 20 people on a Zoom call, um, maybe not the most productive uh, uh, session, but uh, I think we got some clear direction as to where we would need to go ultimately. You know, when the ombudsman summarized the meeting, I think uh, the developer or the prospective purchaser did get some uh, direction as to how he should best proceed. So I, I will continue to follow up on that. And the only other thing I'll mention is um, flipping back to the train station area. We have a, uh, we've been working with the property owner of uh, 111 Black Rock Turnpike, uh, which is where the Planet Fitness is located currently across from uh, BJ's. And Planet Fitness, uh, their lease ends in November and they're moving um, to uh, next to the stop and shop on, on Villa Avenue, which is a great um, outcome for us because we had that 26,000 square feet we couldn't figure out what to do with. Um, so Planet Fitness will be occupying that space. So that'll be 100% uh, fully occupied. But 111 Black Rock Turnpike, they're working with a, uh, a brewery restaurant tour. Um, and that and we're really excited about the potential use. They plan to occupy the entire uh, 25,000 square foot building um and to uh, have a um, beer garden food hall 
restaurant concept with a brewery. Um, and we're really, we think it's a terrific use for the site. Um, they will need a parking variance given the size of the patron floor area. Uh, but again, we don't think that's uh, a difficult ask. Um, we've had similar situations where we've had, uh, you know, for example, Fairfield Theater Company, which abuts the Fairfield's downtown train station. We had to get a variance for something similar. Um, and so again, we have a 1400 car parking lot right next door. Uh, so we don't think a variance is out of the question, uh, but we're also trying to work with the state uh, to create a pedestrian access way between the two, a direct shot from the end of the platform uh, across to the new uh, brewery restaurant at 111 Black Rock Turnpike. So I've uh, been working on that, uh, but again, um, exciting things coming. Uh, Beverly's been at a number of these uh, new business openings we've had. We have you know, three or four more coming up next week. Uh, so we've been very busy, uh, but I'm happy to take any questions on other development sites that are of interest uh, for folks. Uh, so Mark, uh, the, it, it looks like the Beach Road uh, development uh, has pushed through. It looks like they, the developer got favorable consideration. And so it looks like that will be pressing through. Any comments on that? So you, you may recall that this was the 40 unit 830G application for the former Masonic Temple on uh, Beach Road. Mm -hmm. And the commission had approved it, but with conditions such that it couldn't you know, be more than two stories, I think 20 units, two stories effectively. And the, and the developer had appealed that decision or the conditions that were imposed with the approval. And the judge sided with the developer in a decision that was released uh, this past week. Um, now the commission meets next Tuesday and the commission could um, apply for cert uh, to go to the appellate court. And you know there might be a possibility that they do exactly that. So it's not completely over. I don't think that, again, this is my opinion. Um, they may have pushed, uh, pushed the envelope a bit too far. Um, the cards are kind of stacked against uh, the town and planning and zoning commission with a 830G application to begin with. Uh, they tried out some, uh, I think some very novel arguments in support of their position, the town town did. Uh, this judge didn't, didn't quite buy it. So, um, but you know, it's possible that the commission may decide to appeal the decision um, next Tuesday when they meet an executive session and then, you know, we'll see where things go. But, um, yeah, it was, uh, I wasn't terribly surprised that, that I, I thought, you know, maybe if, uh, three stories maybe, but, uh, two, two was a little bit drastic. Uh, but I know, you know, they had a lot of issues. Uh, the neighborhood was very much, uh, against uh, the proposal, thought it would, and still does think it would have a adverse impact on the historic district. You know, the site is not in the historic district. Uh, it doesn't actually direct the, but the historic district, but nevertheless, it's close enough that people were very much concerned about how this would impact that particular area of, of town. And, and there still is, um, you know, a number of folks filed for intervener status. So, you know, who knows where they, where, you know, the commission is one thing, they can take their own action, but they're also trying to figure out, uh, you know, what's the sweet spot between, you know, making accommodate or coming up so, something that the developer could live with, but also the neighborhood too. So I think it was, it was probably a, a bit, a bit much to kind of bring everyone together on that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and what about, uh, I, I, I've been hearing that uh, Bigelow is going to be shifting to, uh, to Shelton and what, uh, what do you hear and know about that? Well, they're, they're building a global distribution center on property that they purchased up in Shelton. They had property already. Uh, mm -hmm. They purchased a site that was fairly uh, good size, obviously, to facilitate. Uh, they've been landlocked, and, and we've been trying our, our best for the last three years to find a location in town for this operation. As a temporary measure, they uh, lease space in Orange, but they would prefer, you know, it to be a little closer and, um, you know, 
ideally at some point, you know, uh, you know, they're trying to get as much uh, close by as they can. So, um, you know, the orange uh, facility was kind of an interim step, but they saw this opportunity to purchase property there. We didn't have anything uh, similar to that um, anywhere close, but we've been kind of looking at all kinds of creative options to create uh, for this distribution uh, facility because they're bursting at the seams. Uh, right. Now, Monday, the governor, despite all that, the, the company continues to make investments in their Fairfield facility. They just uh, completed a, a two or $3 million renovation and put in an automatic uh, palletizer uh, rack system to help manage their, um, their product um, in, inside, be as efficient as possible. And the governor is actually coming down on Monday to, to take a look at that. So, um, you know, Cindy, uh, we work very closely with, with Jim Gilday, who's the plant manager, and Cindy Bigelow, the CEO, um, to accommodate all their needs. They're just uh, the space requirements that they have right now. We just don't have anything in, in Fairfield. So um, good news that they're staying in state. Um, right. You no, know, that that was uh, a concern as well. You know, they have facilities elsewhere where they right. don't have the same uh, space considerations. But uh, in, in this part of the state, it's a little harder to uh, to accommodate. Sure. So, what what is their projection for that property? They're hoping to uh, start with this global distribution facility later. I think uh, have that in place by twenty twenty four. Um, you know, beyond that, they don't really have uh, plans that they indicated so, so far. Okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. Uh, anyone else? Uh, any, other, uh, any other projects? Anything else that you might want an update on? Uh, I assume there's no updates on the uh, veterinary hospital. Or well, I, I, no, they haven't refiled. I, I should, uh, I do need to reach out to Dr. Marsh to see if we can be of help. Um, I, I think, you know, again, the probably the biggest issue there is to, to uh, see if they can come to terms with their abutter. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's hard uh, that, that they have such a outsized role in this, but that's the reality. I think uh, if they come to something where they were, revising the plan such they provide a little bit more buffer and a little smaller facility and hopefully uh, that will uh, um, alleviate the concerns of, of that uh, abutter in the neighborhood generally but uh, but I will reach out to him and see if we can help push that along and no no other parties interested in the space that you know in that property yeah there are other properties. There are other folks interested in that property. I'm not sure it would be a higher and better use, uh, but I, I I do know of at least one individual who had uh, also expressed interest in purchasing that site if it became available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I suspect that others would. Our our concern at the time was that you know that site uh, could accommodate uh, residential too, and you know again, not that residential is always a bad use, but uh, it's a bad use for even that site. But um, you know, given the neighborhood reaction and sensitivity, I, I just was in in envisioning something that might be more dense than what the neighborhood might be, uh, uh, might, might tolerate. So I, I guess, you know, I, I'd rather see us look to figure out a way to make it work for a longstanding uh, member of our business community uh, to expand there, the veterinary practice. There are a bunch of vacancies down at that intersection. It's, you know, there's the, uh, the old Testos. Testos, the yeah. Bank is now for sale. The, uh, or is, was it the Higgins Group building down there? Uh, the bank is available, and I think the real estate uh, company is also available. I have Hillside on my, on my commercial space. <laughs> uh, Testos, um, you know, I talked to the property owner, and he had some very specific ideas as to what he uh, envisioned for that site. He seemed to have some good, good leads, although he was open to, uh, to a, you know, other operators if we could identify them. So, I, I did reach out with Colin's help to, uh, to a couple, but I never heard back. Okay. Hmm. All right. For, uh, for, uh, for the market? 
for yeah for the market for the market yeah yeah i, I talked to uh rob sinto as well who had had some ideas for that site so i put the two of them in touch with one another so I, I should circle back with uh, with with the folks there and, and see if we can again uh, where he is in the process. Maybe he's moving ahead with something. So, but I haven't heard anything new. You know, what's kind of interesting is that because there's so many properties that are in flux in that area, you really could reshape that area uh, in, into a, a, a real, really active village again. Yeah, and because. I mean, if you if you could if you could coordinate what's going in there to support village uh, uh, village um, uh, merchants, so and um, if you could thread the needle in terms of what what the what the village the you know the Greenfield Hill improvement and what they like would support, right? So uh, it's been trying to trying to thread that needle as to what's what's uh, feasible in the marketplace and then what the what the neighborhood would would also support is sometimes challenging i think the neighborhood has to be careful because i think is there not a a uh, a sewer trunk that that uh, goes up that high? yeah so that would support some real development that maybe they couldn't stop so they might they might want to reconsider how yeah, that was that was a concern of mine with regard to the site that Dr. Marsh was considering too. So you know, um, I was happy to see uh, you know the proposal that was put forth, and it's just trying to figure out a way we can find find a way to to uh, to accommodate um, you know all the all the stakeholders there to make sure we got something that everyone can kind of kind of bless and support. You can have another beach road there if you're not careful. Yeah, a challenge, right? Uh, so, uh, Beverly, can uh, you give us an update on uh, the chamber uh, projects? So, as uh, Mark mentioned, uh, we've been busy with ribbon cuttings. I mean, it's really fantastic. I think we've had four or six, and they're still coming up within the last couple of weeks. Um, so, it's nice to see that. Um, People are still picking Fairfield, still creating vibrancy for the town. It's just really, really nice to see all of that. Um, one thing, uh, we've got the shop and stroll coming up, as Mark mentioned, but one thing that we are working on right now is each year we create, design, and produce um, a visitor's guide and business directory. And this is, uh, let me see if I can do this. This is what it looked like last time around. Um, so we're working on that. We hope to have this produced in June. Um, and people still love to pick up this, this little booklet, so to speak. And um, we distribute them at Parents Weekend, Freshman Orientation of the Universities. But they do sit in Mark's office and in Brenda's office, uh, the Fairfield University Bookstore. So, um, so these are utilized, they're at all of our events. Real estate agents love them. Uh, when new teachers come on board, the school asks us for some of these to distribute to them. So, um, so this is very popular when Mark and I go to Connecticut Tourism Day or within our tourism group. Um, there used to be one down in New York City. Um, these would go with us. And again, it's a nice opportunity to showcase the town of Fairfield in addition to the business community. So that's something that we're working on right now. Excellent. So thank you. Very, very good. Uh, the spring fling, you want to mention that too, Bev? Yeah, so we're... The chamber is still trying to get its sea legs back, so to speak, to see <laughs> what's working now, what isn't. After two years, we do have our annual fundraiser coming up on April 27th, which is uh, the day before the shop and stroll at the historic Burr Mansion. Uh, we're asking for silent auction items. Um, the chamber, as well as other businesses, you know, we haven't held an event in two years, so to speak. So, um, so this is our real kickoff to see, you know, the response um, to the event and uh, silent auction items and sponsorship. So we're really looking forward to that. And uh, we're starting to plan out the rest of the calendar year as well. Excellent. Good, Beverly. Thank you. Anyone have any questions for Beverly? All right. Any other business? 
Well, you mentioned earlier uh, having returning to in-person meetings, and, and that would yes. be fine. And we, we can, I believe, accommodate a hybrid meetings. So folks like Ken, who may be traveling into the city on that day or others, uh, we can do, uh, you know, have them be able to call in or participate via Zoom as we have been doing, but others we can have in, in the room. So uh, I guess the question is when we we're doing in-person meetings, we used to meet at eight o'clock and we've gone to 8.30 uh, with the Zoom. Um, I don't know if, if uh, you know, if we want to continue at 8.30 and have the hybrid model, uh, the eight o'clock was really to accommodate people that would want to attend the meeting first and then go to work afterward. Uh, so it's really up to you, but I, I'm happy to put that to, you know, work with you, Kevin, to put that together. It's just that that's one question I have, whether we want to continue with the 830 meeting time, if that works. And then, you know, again, the idea townwide is that uh, as, as groups begin to meet again in person, uh, we would offer both the public and commission members the opportunity to participate remotely if that uh, was more convenient to them so we can accommodate the hybrid meeting model. Um, and with a small group like this, I, I don't see an issue. I've already done it with the Affordable Housing Committee. So so is it possible to maybe in May's meeting to, to meet? Yep. Yep, absolutely. So can I, let me put it out there to the fellow commissioners. Uh, if we try to, if you could, to, uh, to make it in person next month, why don't we do 8.30? Why don't we stay with the 8.30? How does everyone feel about that? I see thumbs up. So I think we're good. And again, if uh, folks are you traveling and going into the city, we can, we can um, allow them to participate via Zoom uh, or phone. Perfect. That's okay. great. That's great. So let's, uh, let's try and do that. Love to, uh, love to see faces. Uh, it, was, it was nice when we had our, our little retreat and being able to see everyone. For sure. So let's uh, let's get back to that if we can. All right. Uh, any other business? Yeah, um, I attended the uh, economic forum put on by our politicians, uh, state politicians, uh, Laura Devlin, Kristen McCarthy, Tony Wong and Jennifer Leeper were all there. They're doing this every month and they're coming up and doing it again on uh, April 12th. They don't have a location yet. It's in the evening. And what they're doing is they're doing outreach to the business community. Um, and it's, you know, it's a two-way street. They're informing what's going on at the state level and they're looking for feedback from the business community here so that they can uh, represent us appropriately. So I attended the last two and uh, the turnout is increasing. The first one was a small turnout. This last uh, time we met was at the castle. There was probably a dozen or so business people there as well as the politicians. And I anticipate um, uh, will be equal or greater turnout coming up uh, on the 12th. So I just, since, you know, I thought this was a proper place to let everybody know if you're not already aware of this going on for any business uh, owners and or to pass it along to other people in the business community. It was, uh, I, I saw that and I actually it was really uh, trying to get there, uh, uh, so it uh, was it was uh, well received, I guess. Then Justin, yeah, and I don't, know if you've, I don't know if you've heard, but Laura Devlin, uh, yeah, have you heard about the announcement from Laura Devlin? You yes, know, uh, we have. I'm yeah. Excited for her, and I'm excited for for our town, and and certainly for the state. I think that's a I think that's a great uh, uh, choice uh, for for Bob. So. Uh, that's, I mean, irregardless of, of, of your political positioning, she has really been terrific for, for our, our community. So mm -hmm. that's great. Uh, super, all right, any other, uh, any other business? No, I just wanted to mention, Justin, that um, as they were formulating this group, um, they, re they reached out to the chamber and to Mark and um, that we're supporting it and uh, we're promoting it through uh, the chamber database as well. Yeah, we've um, been sending we've been sending out e blasts to our our right. list. And I know Bev's been doing the same to uh, promote it, and make and tr just make sure people have the opportunity to meet with their legislators, as you said, Justin, to provide you know feedback, uh, suggestions, or comments, answer you know, ask questions, that type of thing. It's, it's good. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea um, for sure. Thanks yeah. for bringing that. 
So I guess if that's it, I think we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll adjourn for the uh, the day. Actually, we we did pretty good today for our time, did we not? I, I think we're yeah we're we're good. All right, good. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, look forward to seeing everyone uh, uh, next month uh, who can, and uh, be well in between. You take care. Thank you. Thank you. Adjourned. Adjourned.